Well, first of all, it's a very low barrier of entry to start a podcast. So I agree. I'm totally there with you. So a lot of people are like, oh, I got a, I got a mic. And so now I'm going to have a podcast. And it's like, okay, but more, you need a strategy. And again, action is going to bring clarity more than anything else. You can invest with somebody who's done podcasts before and they'll help you with that. But not everybody has that ability. And also whatever you decide on is inevitably going to change as you evolve. Okay, first of all, I just, I want to say that your presentation, okay, first, like intro, I can edit any of this out if I need to, but I met you at Capshovians Live. Yes. And Miss Alicia is one of those people out there giving people permission to do things the way that they do it best, which is whatever is comfortable for you. Like show up as yourself in the best way that you know how, which isn't making a million cold calls to get that 1%, you know, that everyone talks about. And it's like attracting the right people and doing what feels good, having those fun conversations. And oh my goodness, that turns in a, into a sale. How great. So that's who I'm talking to today. And I am so thrilled to have you on because not only is it awesome that you do what you do, you share um, this different way of selling, but also you're so like funny <laughs> on top of that. You have <laughs> such a great personality. So, so wonderful speaker. Yeah. I've never had a chance to listen to any of her, her uh, sessions or her speeches. Where, where can we see any of that? Do you have any recordings or, or like a place where we can visit that right now, Alicia? Yeah. Well, I think that like my podcast would probably be the best place. Yeah, that makes sense. That yeah. I have solo episodes that will really lay out stuff in in that way. Okay, that's beautiful. So that's what we'll talk about. So, um tell me where or I'm sorry, not where because I think most of us now if you have a podcast you can be found anywhere. So tell me yeah. about your podcast name and then tell me why you started. Like what inspired you to start your podcast? Ooh, good questions. <laughs> um, so the podcast is sales is not a dirty word. Yeah. And what inspired me to start it was like, there just wasn't a lot of options for, for service providers who sell their own services to sell in a way that wasn't like this icky, uncomfortable, weird thing. So I really wanted to bring that to everyone I could. and. I will say, like, I didn't do the best job the first maybe year or two. So, like, don't judge those beginning episodes, okay? Like, but I, 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 that's again the fact that you you are honest about that. That's what I want people to understand is like you find success by taking the action. You don't find success by being perfect, and then it's like, okay, let's go. So, so I love that. I, first of all, because I haven't had enough episodes to really claim a solid year even in podcasting because I, I took a break as I had my son, but two, you, you, you're you saying one or two years is not, the but you kept going. That's the beauty of it. And I love how honest you are about that because part of the reason why I do this is to remind people like, it's okay. If you have something to share, put it out there. You have the opportunity to iterate and make changes and do better because now you're a freaking rock star. Like you're leading so many people into this movement of selling in a really comfortable and awesome place. So I apologize for cutting you off, but yes, yeah, so it's not perfect, not not Alicia's version of perfect for the first couple of years, but where are we now? Yeah, so we're at, I think I'm going into my fourth year and last year, I was very consistent, like every week. And I also started doing solo episodes instead of just interviews. So you're right that action brings clarity. It's really an evolution. So 
who do I want to interview? Like I would bring on sales experts and then I wouldn't agree with what they said because my approach is so different. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to interview sales experts. And everybody thinks that that like they contact me to come on my show and talk about sales. And I'm like, no, I want to talk about everything but sales, actually, like all of the ancillary things that people need, like personal development and mindset and operations and different lead narration methods. And that's what I want to focus on in my interviews. And then I'll just have these short little lessons on my sales methodology. And that has worked out really well. And it took me a long time to get there. And when I first started, I actually did sales coaching sessions live. So I would like workshop someone's offer with them so somebody could hear it. They were like an hour long. And you know what? I didn't have a good mic. And people were like, it's hard for my ears to listen to that. (laughs) And it's funny because I like have asked everyone that I can hoping for a different answer about deleting my previous episodes. Everyone tells me to keep them. No, you have. Yes, I agree. I'm I am on that train. I'm sorry that I can't give you what you want to hear, but I'm yeah. also that. I, I love that because there's not enough people out there willing to take the action because they just see everyone doing it perfectly. Right. Because that's when people are introduced to you is when you're doing things really well. That's when people assume that it's an overnight um, success. Right. When it was like a 10 year overnight success. Right. So so. I, I, I'm i glad that they're still there. Maybe we can pull some clips <laughs> and they're and still together now. <laughs> no, so, yeah. so what would you say was the hardest part? Like um, in, in getting it started, obviously, um, even now looking back, you're like, okay, it wasn't perfect. But was there a part where you were thinking, you know, how, how I don't know the tech or do I even have something worthy um, of people listening? Or have you always known? I know what I'm doing. It's just a matter of getting it out there. I want more people to know because people who struggle with sales um, th- need to know that there's a different way. 99% of sales gurus out there are saying, this is how it's done. And if you do the research, like everyone's saying, it's, it's all in numbers. You are one of the very few people, if not only, and that's why you call yourself the black sheep. So teaching what you teach so so you know i imagine though being the first um it it was hard and mentally it might have been i I think it would have been hard was it hard for you or did you just know like i know i'm doing so i just need to do this i mean i definitely knew sales i think the the hardest part is well first of all it's a very low barrier of entry to start a podcast so agree i'm totally there with you so a lot of people are like, oh, I got a, I got a mic. And so now I'm going to have a podcast. And it's like, okay, but more, you need a strategy. And again, action is going to bring clarity more than anything else. You can invest with somebody who's done podcasts before and they'll help you with that. But not everybody has that ability. And also whatever you decide on is inevitably going to change as you evolve. Mm. So yeah, it's just like, just just go with something because it's going to be different once you start executing and getting a response from people. So, so often people will have podcasts and they get nothing from it because they haven't figured out what people want to hear and what causes them to reach out and move forward and implement. And so, I mean, it's been five years of this version of my business that's sales related specifically. Um, and I mean, it started as I said that I was um, subtle selling, which like didn't quite hit, right? Oh, okay. And then I was like, oh, I'm for introverts. But then there were like a lot of people who didn't identify as introverts who were introverts because they think it's about being shy or outgoing. And it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's more than that. Mm -hmm. And so then I did the matchmaker sales method, which is closer, but not quite, not quite banging, right? (laughs) Um, So now I'm at the black sheep sales method. And I did it an episode like it's official. I'm announcing it. And here's the evolution up to this point. And maybe there will be another iteration, but this one feels really good. And this is why. And just being honest with people and allows you to get that that honest feedback from them so that you can go in the right direction. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so this is so cool. Alicia, this is the first successful podcast 
conversation that I've been able to have since I relaunched my podcast. Um, I don't, it's, it's been funny because my best friend and I, I, we've always wanted to just have a chat, like just, just to do it because I love her so much and it's just fun to talk together. But, uh, that, that didn't work out when we originally booked. So we're gonna have to do that later this weekend. And <laughs> my other, my other friend, um, we, uh, knew each other from school and that was an awesome conversation. I think it was almost two hours, but he couldn't get on Zoom. So I had to go on Be Live, which I haven't used in literally years. And I didn't realize that you had to have a different kind of account to be able to record on there. Oh my God. To stream into a place. So, so there was a red dot, but it wasn't a I'm recording red dot. It was, oh my God. You're I, kidding. Was, uh. I, know, I, I don't consider myself like a tech beginner. I feel like I'm pretty solid on this stuff. So after it was all said and done, I was like, oh man, you know, it's so good. But anyway, so this is the good first, first actual conversation, but. What's really cool is the community that I first started, I mean, that I started is called um, Creating Connections. I think you've heard of it, but um, yes. in that group, the whole idea is to connect really awesome podcast hosts and guests together. But also, if you have a message it and it, you know that it needs to be shared, podcasting is the way. This is where the most growth is going to come if you stay committed and if you allow yourself to go through the iterations. But what instead of launching my episodes the way I normally do, I want to just share this raw episode into that group so that they can see, like, look at Alicia, look at where she's it, she is. But she she mentions you, you just start because it's inevitably going to change. And I definitely did not put the the L in there, but inevitably <laughs> change. <laughs> so, so, so start. And you're not ever going to know what people want from you until you actually start that conversation, until you go out there and do that thing. Um, because you can sit there and talk to yourself all day, all five, six, seven, eight months or years and never move the needle. You'll have no idea. You'll still not get any feedback because you're not doing it. If you don't go out and actually try to ski and you're like in your head, well, if I perfect this ability or I don't ski, I don't know what I'm talking about, but (laughs) I imagine if I went skiing, I can't just in my head be like, oh, I'll get better if I keep practicing, you know, the, the legwork in my head. I actually have to go into the snow and try it that way. Or if I try to ski on the concrete, it would be a really different outcome, right? Yeah. So <laughs> so until we actually do it, we're never going to know. But that's not just with podcasting. That's with sales, right? Like with you finding your message. It's with everything that we want to do in life. So tell me how you came to this part of sales. Like how did you discover Oh, this is what really resonates. You, I mean, for me, it was like the method always worked. It was a matter of finding the message that people understood that they could comprehend and be like, "Oh, yeah, I get it." But, but for you, like, was it just once you started that was always the thing, or did, or did you try all the cold calling and the hundreds of um, of outreaches? Like, what was that process like for you? Yeah. So, I mean, I started in corporate, so I had to do cold outreach. Mm, okay, that's fair. So I, I knew that I hated it a lot and I found other ways to make it work for me. And um, whenever I left corporate, I actually started a marketing agency first, which is really helpful for the sales work I do just because messaging online and offline is really helpful for it all to be the same. And a lot of times people are doing marketing without looking at it through a sales lens. Anyway, I found my clients um, for my marketing agency at meetups that were about different marketing topics where business owners were. And I'd be like, do you you know, want me to do this for you? And they would say, yeah. So there's always a different way that's going to feel more comfortable with you. And it's about trying and being open to it not working, but getting you closer to where you need to be because now you have more information about what doesn't work, which is just as important as knowing what does. And I was always like what you call a natural salesperson. And when you talk to natural salespeople, you're like, well, you know, what do you do? How do you sell? And they say, well, I don't really sell. And it's like, well, what the hell does that mean? (laughs) And so my whole, um, you know, the foundation of my method is because if it's a fit, it's a fact and there's no selling involved. And by selling, I mean convincing. 
And if you're trying to convince someone of someone, you're not selling shit. Yeah. (laughs) You need to tell someone when, when it's not a fit. So people are natural at selling. will will say to somebody, you know, actually like you don't need this. You need this other thing over here. Or like, you don't need the really expensive one with all the bells and whistles. Like you would need this one. And when they do need the expensive one with the bells and whistles, they have the conviction and passion to be like, this is why and why you would benefit. So they're like selling the shit out of it because they really feel that way. And the other person can tell the difference. And when somebody hears from someone who's selling them something, you don't need the most expensive option or you don't need this and go over here. They instantly trust them so much more. And it's such a pattern interrupt because it's so unexpected for someone to have an agenda that is in the other person's best interest instead of just, I want to make a sale. And so mainstream sales methods are completely designed around everyone being a yes, no matter what. The only reason they wouldn't be a yes is if they didn't have a working credit card, which is not great criteria for somebody being a fit. Well, here's the thing. It's even if sometimes even if they don't have a working credit card, people are like, we'll start a credit card for you. Like that method happens too. And I'm blown away. It's like they're telling you this is not a good fit. Like you said, it's not a fact. It is not a fit. So, so, you know, there's, I mean, so many sleazy, slimy tactics out there. So it's, it's caused us all to really just kind of ease away whenever we hear sales in any way, in a lot of ways. And so I, I'm so glad that I I love that that's your slogan. If it's a fit, it's a fact. Like it's, it's so right because again, this is another thing that doesn't just apply to sales. It's in anything that you do in life. When yeah. it's a fit, it's just so much more natural. Like you can go, go. And, and just like you mentioned though, they will, they will sell and share with such a passion that is it it doesn't even feel like selling because it was meant to be it it was it's such a good fit and you know that it's right so they will go into it themselves they will find that that's where they belong right for that service or that product or that tier and so it's a matter of just sharing the information that makes them fit themselves into that glove that that is there so i i think what would you say, like, is there one question that you ask? Because I know with sales, it's a lot of like making sense of where the person is and giving yeah. them and providing them with the right tools or service for where they're at. So is there one question that you typically go to that is usually that usually helps you to determine, oh, this is right for them or, oh, they're a good fit? Or do you feel like energetically in a different way? oh, I know this person is going to go for this package because this is just where I see them at. You know, like, do they, Mm. do you get it from them first? Or do you then talk to them to get a feel for where you should send them, I guess? Yeah, so when when I say, like, don't convince, because you won't sell shit, the, what you're supposed to do is get curious. So you Mm -hmm. really want to understand someone's situation. And there's not really one question because, when I work with somebody, I understand their offer inside and out and then design something for them specifically in their audience. So it's a different kind of question. But we identify like what are the patterns in the people who are really happy with results and what are the patterns in the people who are not happy with the results? And that really helps us design the questions we're going to ask. So if some people aren't happy with the results because it required time that they didn't have, then let's ask people, how much time do you have to invest in this and make sure that they have enough? And if they don't, then it's not a fit for them. And they're looking for a done for you solution, which isn't you. Ooh, yes, yeah, that's it. fair. That makes a lot of sense. So as you're talking about this, what kind of client is right for you? Is there a specific um, industry that they fall into or is it anything that involves sales? You can just go in and break it all down and make sense and make it simple and serve it to them. Like, who do you love to work with? You might be able to help everyone, but who do you love to work with? (laughs) Ideally, it's a service provider who's selling their own service. And then I actually have like another offer once we dial in their sales strategy where I can bring someone on to sell for them. Um, Yeah, but first, it's really about that person who's selling their own service and isn't a salesperson. So I could go to corporate and make a lot more money 
and do sales training there with salespeople and sales teams. But it's just not as fulfilling because people are there because someone told them to be there, not because they want to be there, not because they're passionate about being there. They're trying to make money, go home and cover their ass and do the bare minimum. So I love the impact and the reward that comes from empowering someone who loves what they do and just doesn't know how to communicate it in a way that other people understand and is valuable. I love giving them the words that they need, which naturally gives them confidence that they did not have before. And then money, which is always fun. Yeah. Well, yeah. Which is always good. But that actually brings up a really good point, right? Because um, there are a lot of people, a lot of us in that space of I'm doing this out of need. Like I, I need to do this. And if I don't, things are going to fall apart. What you're serving and who you're supporting and empowering are people who are moving into the want they could be fulfilling their needs and their have to this or that, but they're moving towards their desires and you're helping them to achieve their dreams and do the things that that a lot of us fear because we don't know what the outcome is going to be because we aren't going to be able to support our family if we aren't in that st- uh, that stable income situation, right? Because entrepreneurship is, you get, you the ideal place, obviously, is you get to a point where it is stable. You have a team. You have a process. Everything is awesome. You have clients who love you. And you know what's going to come for the next few months, ideally the next year or so. But when you start, it's a really bumpy road. And not to say that when you get to that stable point that it's not still bumpy. You're still still growing and you're still learning. That's always a process. But in the beginning, It's so hard. It's so, so hard. Just like you said, though, you know, learning your message, learning what fits, what works for people, because just because it works for you and it works really well doesn't mean that that's how other people are going to understand it or communicate it. So it's, you know, it's a, I get why it's so much more fulfilling. But at the same time, I also feel like maybe you can make a direct impact on their life versus in corporate where, you know, it's such a greater number and you don't get to talk to Joe who goes home to Emily, his wife and, you know, their children and all that because, you know, it's the corporate structure is really demanding as well, but in such a different way. Right. So, so yeah. when, when did you realize that it was time to move out of corporate? Yeah. So my family, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. So I never had any idealistic notions about how hard or easy it was. I knew it was hard. I knew that it was unpredictable. I knew that there were lots of times of serious self-doubt and dumpster fires and all kinds of things. And you really needed to have a resilience of steel. And so I went into corporate at first because I was like, not trying to do that. (laughs) But here's the thing that I have a theory about every entrepreneur who was ever in corporate there. I've actually met some people recently who never were in corporate. And I'm like, wow, it's impressive. But a lot of times one of us has tried. We've tried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were a previously labeled high performing and difficult employee. And they're difficult because they're like, wait, this could be better. Why don't we do it like this? Wait. And everyone's like, can you just stop making suggestions? We're all just trying to like get paid and go home. And you're like <laughs> creating, you know, change and work. And like, it's really annoying. And so that was definitely my experience. There were things that just literally did not make sense to me that were not in the client's best interest, that were not in employee's best interest. I'm also garbage at office politics, just really bad at it. And there were people who were chess masters of that stuff, who would like set people up to say things that made them look bad, that they pass on to upper management so they could get the job instead of it. It It's crazy. I was like, this is not the world I want to live in. I want to create the world I'm in. And there's pros and cons to both. And I've always felt like, look, if the pros outweigh the cons, you just accept the cons and you move on. Um, oh, my gosh. I So many nuggets. You you point out so many things that I completely relate to and agree with. Um, but but, <laughs> but 
But you know, when you say you're being so annoying, I can understand why why office politics might not be uh, the best place for you. But <laughs> I, I, there are people who are master puppeteers. They oh. are. They have a way with controlling people, and I've never been able to do that. Um, I've never. I've never been able to play that game. I, I honestly, most of the time, I'm the one being manipulated and I don't even know. Like, and I just, I'm, I go with it. And then it's not until the bad thing happens. I'm like, oh crap, why would you do that to me? You know? And so, <laughs> yeah. So, so for you, yeah, like, it's just, it's really, it's really interesting for you to say too, there is that, that absolute um aspect of you do know how need to know how to play the game to survive to be able to make it i remember my my brother he is in in corporate and he that's his life he enjoys it he loves the nine to five um so he can make his money and then party after and it's perfect for some people um but i remember when he first started interning he was he's a really honest guy and so he was sharing with um with one of the other interns he's like you know this company isn't for me like i know i'm not going to be here but that that person took that information took it to their leaders and they're like oh okay well we won't offer him a position and that he I mean, I don't think he expressively said, you know, this is in confidence. You, I, I just don't think you have to say that. But even so, it's like, oh, how can I leverage the game for me? Like, how can I? Oh my God, I, do I, you want to know a crazy story? Gosh, yes, please. Because the way that you enjoy, like, how can I say no? <laughs> my first job ever out of college, I speak Spanish and I studied abroad a lot. And it was with um, a company who like put together study abroad programs. So I was going to be able to like go to Costa Rica on these trips and stuff. I was excited about it. Did not pay well, right? It was like $29,000 a year or some oh. shit. Um, and so I was looking at apartments that I could buy and I was talking to one of the coworkers about like, okay, well, I make this much. So I think I could afford this much a month. She went to them and told them that I she was unhappy because I guess I got more from the beginning than she did. And they fired me in my first week, which is now illegal. It's illegal yeah, yeah, to yeah, fire yeah. someone for talking about salary, but it did not used to be. And I didn't oh. know. I just yeah. got out of college. They don't tell you in college not to do that. Like, how? Oh, oh my God. Yeah. It was oh. wild. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> I can't believe. Oh, man. That. But she never. So when you had that conversation with her, she she was just like, oh yeah, okay. But she never said, wait, you make how much? So she didn't have that conversation with you, huh? No, I had no idea. And she was also talking to me about how she was like doing a bunch of shrooms last weekend, and I was like, that seems like inappropriate co office conversation. And I wasn't taking it to my bosses, but you know, you whatever. No, you know, it's so funny that it's. It's really it's it, the best way for me to put it is it's it's interesting. And and because I love like the psychology of us and like why we do things, what I always stop to wonder before I even judge like, oh, and say that's so terrible. Like, how were they raised? Like, what was their family dynamic like? Why is that the first thing that they chose to do was to go and do this instead of having a conversation with you? Because because now that it's okay to talk about your salary, everyone knows that. But I remember when it was hugely taboo. I remember when, um, when you know, it was a big thing that might not be stated verbatim or stated clearly. It wasn't. It was something you knew. You just, you just kind of like had a feeling about you. How did you know? I don't know. I did. There was. I was totally blindsided. You said I it was your I... roommate, right? No, it was the a coworker. Oh, a co okay, a coworker. That's so. Oh my gosh, if you're yeah, we're we're college student, Alicia. <laughs> yeah, I was like yeah. so embarrassed, so ashamed, you know. And obviously, like looking back, it was all for a reason, and blah 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 blah. blah. No, of course. And that's that's <laughs> another thing, though. That's because because in that experience, I do I imagine going into other situations? You ever stop to wonder, like, okay. I, <laughs> Has it jaded you to the to future situations where you're like, all right, maybe should I or should I not share this information? You know, like, have you had to hesitate it due to that situation, I guess? 
Well, my whole life, I've been told that I'm too blunt, too honest, too transparent, too challenging to whatever, right? So it's been something that I've dealt with my entire life. And I used to adjust myself a lot. Mm. Um, And then I realized that that was more a them problem and not a me problem. And I just needed to be around different people. And so the people I'm around, like even just the other day, I was like, I'm sorry, I might be being too blunt. And people were like, no, we really appreciate you like saying this stuff. Because I'll always say the thing that everybody's thinking, but not saying or ask a question that everybody wants to ask but isn't asking and like I can't fathom not asking or saying it like I would not feel right uh, making assumptions I need clarity right yeah. and and a lot of people will just let the assumptions take place because it's like sort of uncomfortable I'm like it's more uncomfortable for us all to be in a situation that nobody likes I yeah I yeah. think that sounds more uncomfortable so yeah. I'm trying to figure it out right now and, and that yeah no, no, go ahead. I'm so sorry. I was just going to say, like, the uncomfort, we get more discomfort, right? Like, if you don't get it out now, you're you're building yourself up for more discomfort because nobody knows what's going on or there is no clarity. So I, <laughs> I, I love that. And I do, especially with social media and everything being so glamorous and so pretty and so perfect, you are a definite breath of fresh air. And and I love your answer to my last question because that's even when I was asking it, you know, I was I was really interested. I was like, okay, so how is she going to answer? Because that that really does say a lot about where you are and like how comfort uh, comfortable and how confident you are in in where you're you're at, right? Like just just in general. And so just saying and realizing like I just, I'm not around those people anymore where I have to reconsider anything I say. I get to be myself. And the the too much of anything is no longer in existence because I can just show up as me. And that brings me back to like, I feel like the whole theme of when I was gone and when I initially met you is when you are fully yourself, fully yourself, you're giving other people permission to be themselves. And that is just so lovely like it's so beautiful and and you are just the essence of that of just the natural like silliness the grace like you can tell that that you embody who you are and you are not shy of it and you're not afraid of it and you know and that's that's rare these days like it's you don't see that very often and so i i so appreciate sh- you sharing all of this insight for taking the time out to be on. I want to know what you have coming up. Is there any, besides for your podcast, of course, because we have to tune into that, but is there, do you have anything else coming up? Any speaking engagements, any classes or any, um, how do people work with you? I guess is where I'm going with this. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I would say that if you listen to sales is not a dirty word and start with the solo episode, how to sell like a natural and it resonates with you, then I would say, you know, what would that be worth if it was specific to you instead of generic? generic? And if that seems like it would be valuable, then book a sales level up call. And I'll look at what you're doing right now and tailor the information to be specific to you. And it's a great way to find out if if we're a fit, because if whatever I say resonates with you, then that's a good sign that you would thrive with what we do. So do you, are, should it be someone who's established, who already knows their messaging and all of that, and you're just stepping in to help clarify the message or to deliver it in a way that makes sense? Or is it, doesn't matter where they are, what level they are in business? That is such a great question. So I started having a lot of people come to me who just didn't know how to differentiate themselves or say anything, the messaging that's going to create leads and attract the right people. And that, that's something I do in like my my signature uh, program, but I broke off and just made it its own thing. So even if you you don't know what your messaging is or don't have the leads yet, ideally you have a service like, or you like have some skill set that you've done, Monetized. executed for clients many, many times, even if that was in corporate or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I can help put together that offer for you with your skill set. So there is like, I, I broke out like a, a, a first rung basically. Oh, okay. Nice. For that reason. Yeah. F- because there were so many people who were kind of like not at the part where they're selling yet. 
Yeah, no, I love that. I and I'm so glad to know that because um a lot of the people in in my realm is like they they want to move into their own thing, but they don't know where to start or how to do it. And again, there are just a lot of people offering that service of helping you to build out your offer and all of these things. But because there is no, really no barrier to entry, you have people who say they can do this thing and they market oh. really well, but the yeah. delivery is a little lacking and i i don't want to send people that way um yeah. necessarily to be their guinea pigs or to be their uh you know their negative reviews but so so i'm glad that now we have a way um of helping these people and with through you so yeah quote you're probably doing better than you realize and you're on the right track no there was a part before that that was important Never compare your behind the scenes to somebody's feature film. You know what? You're probably doing better than you realize and you're on the right track. Oh my gosh. Yes. I, and I've actually heard something similar to that before. So can you say that for me one more time? Don't compare your be behind the scenes to somebody's feature film. You're probably doing better than you realize and are on the right track. And I can say that after working with a lot of companies that seem to be very together and everybody is a shit show behind the scenes. Oh, you're not the first one to say that. I've heard that about so many people that you're like, oh, this person is really big. They're on TV. They're everywhere, you know, but but it, behind the scenes, it's it's completely different. But you knowing that and I imagine that you remind yourself that regularly whenever you hit a point where you're like, this person's doing so much better than me because we we all get there at some point. But that's also a good reflection of what we see, again, on social media that's really prominent and right in front of us is is we're most in most cases, some people do. And some some days I will, too, like share the hard parts. But the hard parts that happen a lot more often than we share on social media is not what's highlighted, but that's what's real. And so so that's that's such a great reminder um, and a really wonderful way to encapsulate this conversation um to round it out because you are doing such an awesome job at just being you and i think that's that's ultimately it because you're showing up as you you can do everything else so well you can deliver and speak and and do your job and help others so well because you're like i'm alicia and i'm totally proud of that and i i and the black sheep. And I know that I am, but I know that I have a service to offer and I do it in a way that is really fun and super comfortable and, and just makes sense. It's, it's, it makes everything a lot less uh, overwhelming because if you want to hit a certain percentage doing it the other way, you got to make hundreds or thousands of sales calls. And I've literally been a part of programs where it's like, your salespeople need to reach out to at least 100, if not 300 people in a day, if you want to meet that number. And it's like, if I'm the only one doing this and that's what I'm doing, what am I offering? How am I going to ever deliver? Because I'm only reaching out, you know? So I love that you offer what you offer and, and just an easy way to do this. Again, sales is not a dirty word. If you want to learn more about Alicia, where do you like to hang out on social media? LinkedIn is is the place where I'm hanging out the most. Okay, so LinkedIn. So people can find you on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. I so appreciate you. This is so, so fun. I'm glad that we met and I look forward to having lots more fun conversations in the future, Alicia. Um, is there anything else that we need to know before we go? No, but I do want to say thank you for showing up the way you do. Because I remember when I saw you cap show beans in live and you had those wild shoes and I was like, this chick is representing. I could not wear those shoes, but I love that she's wearing them. And it makes me feel like I can wear whatever crazy shit that I want to wear that's not shoes. Oh, look so, thank, thank you. you. I so appreciate you. Look at look at you have a guest back there. I know. So to your, oh no. <laughs> I was like, that's a no. <laughs> well, no, he's like, oh, can I go outside? That's oh, okay. okay. Oh, well, perfect timing. I can yeah. let you go. So you can take him outside. Thank you so much, Alicia. You have a lovely day and I'll talk to you again soon. Hey, you too. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Okay, wait, before you go, thank you so much for tuning in and checking out my conversation with Alicia, the sales queen, but the black sheep of sales herself. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed that at all, please remember to hit subscribe. Leave us a review if you enjoyed the conversation and learned or took away anything from this. Don't forget to invite your friends and family, anyone who enjoys sales or just likes to be a part of a really fun conversation. If we aren't already connected on social media, you know what to do. Find me at the handle Connections Queen almost anywhere. And I'd love to say hello. Let me know what you enjoyed about this episode, what you want to see next, or if you're the perfect guest because you have something that you want to share to the world and we can have a really fun conversation while we're at it, please reach out. In the meantime, join me in my Facebook group. It's totally free, but I'm connecting really great people who are podcast hosts, uh, who are looking for guests, uh, experts, or just a great message to share to their audience. And then podcast guests looking for really awesome hosts to be guests of on their podcast. So lots to say, really full, but you know what I mean? Join the community. I'd love to have you. If you're an aspiring podcast host, you want to get your podcast out there, you want to get started, but you don't know where to start, how to start, too many things to ask. I'm here for you. I did it in a really easy way and I can show you how. Uh, But if you're already a podcaster and it's just getting really intense and you want to start handing that off to somebody else so you can just do the recording and do what you really truly love, reach out to me because I might have something really awesome for you. All right. Thank you so much again for being here. And I look forward to seeing you again in our next conversation. Let's start creating more connections. Thank you.